and welcome to the Godly Playroom at First United Church. My name is Ruth Lummox, and it's my privilege to be in this space and to share some of the stories with you. We hope you're also finding ways to engage with people, perhaps to come into the Godly Playroom on a Sunday morning as part of our storytelling or be part of worship. There's something about being in community with one another that enriches both the story and our experience and creates a whole different energy. But there's also an energy that comes as we gather virtually. And so again, thank you for taking the time to nourish your spirit. There might be a few things you'd like to get ready before we begin and know that you can pause the video at any time and check in with family, with household, get your materials ready. But the more you can participate in the full session without interruption, the better. Just enables us to, to settle into the story and into our time together a little more fully than if our mind is off in different directions. So some of the things for today you might like to have ready are a candle, whether you're using one with matches or a battery operated candle. You might also want to have some water and a glass and a bowl. And if there are more than one person in your household or sharing this video with you, then a glass for everybody is a good thing, but you'll only need one bowl. I'm going to do something a little different during the response time, but you'll see more about that later. Or if you want to skip that part, you can certainly pause the video and engage with your own art materials. So sometimes people like to have something, a pen and paper to journal or some crayons or pencil crayons or markers, watercolors, something to create in color, a drawing, or maybe you're a knitter or a sewer or someone who builds things with wood. And so all different kinds of materials you might choose to use. For your response. You might also like to have something for your feast. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy, whatever is on hand. I have some grapes and some water for my feast and your company, which makes it just that much more delightful. And I have a story. A story that I'm going to tell and then we're going to enter into it in our response time in a different way, which we do every week. But this week is a little different even from those. But before all of that happens, let's just take a deep breath or two and get ourselves settled into this space. Sometimes a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And think about what it is you might need to set aside. Perhaps something going on at school or at work or at home that you just need to offer to God so that you can be present to this story and to let it perhaps maybe give you some peace or some guidance about that situation. So let's take another deep breath. And you might listen, might listen for what it is you need today, now, to come close to God. You know. Well, I can't tell you. I mean, some people like to be still. Some people like to curl up on the couch, have their favorite prayer shawl or comfy blanket to wrap up in. Whatever you need to be ready, you know. And then take another deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Are you ready? Once there was someone 
who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him. And the more they followed him, the more they wondered who he was. And one time they just had to ask, who are you? And one time when they asked him that question, he said, I am the light. You might want to enjoy the light a little bit. There seems to be less and less light, at least daylight these days. It's darker, longer in the morning and earlier at night. Even some of the news on our podcasts or streams or TV or newspaper. Just so many things going on that sometimes make it difficult for us to notice the light. I'm going to put it back up on the shelf though so that it's out of the way for this story. This is a fairly big story. We are entering the second week of the time of the color orange, creation time. I wonder what you notice going on in creation around you. You'll find today's story on the parable shelf. so you'll know where to find it. It's very gold. Maybe there is something valuable inside. Parables are very valuable, maybe even more precious than gold. Hmm. And it looks like a gift, a gift that is given. Parables are gifts. Even if we don't know what a parable is, they've already been given to us. We don't need to earn them or buy them. They're simply given. And it looks very old. Parables are very old. They were given to us long ago. There is a lid that's closed, like a door. And sometimes even when we think we're ready, the parable won't open for us. I don't know why that is, but I do know that if you keep coming back to the parable, that one day it will open. I think we should have a look and see if there is a parable inside. is something very green. It 
It is oh so green. I wonder. It might be a hill. Hmm. Or maybe one of those things that a frog sits on in the pond. Maybe it's the leaf from a very tall tree. Hmm. Yes, it is a piece of cloth. But it's still green. And it's green on both sides. With parables, there is always another side. Hmm. I wonder if there's anything else to help us get ready for this parable. Oh. Hmm. I wonder what this could be. It's very blue. Maybe it's like something that you look into or look through to see something. Hmm. There's still more things. These are not blue or green. There is no light in these at all. It's like holding a bit of shadow in one's hands. Hmm. Sometimes people who sit over there think they see a face. But there is no light in those eyes. And no light in that smile. I wonder if it's a bit of something left over from that, that story, that very beginning of beginnings. When there was nothing. Hmm. think we need more things to help. Oh, and there are. Huh. I wonder what this could be. It's non-elastic band. A mustache. <laughs> hmm. A path. the wrong color for licorice, even for black licorice, which I know some people actually like, but mm, hmm, there are still more. Maybe the path is here now, like a road. There is another one. Ah, maybe maybe it's like goalposts or a door. Or perhaps this is a bridge between the two paths. Hmm. So many things. And there are more still. Hmm. Now there's an inside and an outside. And we can open it up 
so that if you're outside, you could go inside, and if you're inside, you could get back outside again. Hmm. Maybe it's like a parable box? Or a baseball diamond? There are still more. Hmm. All right. There's another one. And another one still. It's getting thicker and taller. There are quite a few of them here, actually. And I'm not sure how high this is going to get or how thick it might become. But maybe... There. Hmm. Maybe it is a house. I wonder what lives there. Hmm. Many people in the world still live in a single room house. Let's see if there's anything else in here to help us get ready. There are. Hmm. Maybe it's a house for sheep. There's still more. It could be a house for two sheep. Or three sheep. Four sheep. That must be enough. We have one, two, three, four sheep. There's still one more. Hmm. Five sheep. That looks like everything we need to help us with this parable. So all we can do is begin. Once, there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him. And the more they followed him, the more they wondered who he was. So one time they just had to ask, who are you? And one time, when they asked him that question, he said, I am the good shepherd. And I know each of my sheep by name. And they know the sound of my voice. When I call them from the sheepfold, they follow me. And I go before them to show them the way.
I show them the way to the good green grass. And I show them the way to the cool, refreshing waters. places of danger, I show them the way to go through. And I bring them back to the sheepfold. And if even one of them was missing, I would look everywhere. I would look in the good green gas and beside the cool, refreshing waters. I would even go into the places of danger. And when I found it, I would pick it up and put it on my shoulders and carry it back, even if it were very heavy, so that it could be with the others and be safe. And then I would be so happy that I couldn't celebrate just by myself, and I would call on my friends and we would gather together and have a great feast because the one who was lost was found. This is the ordinary shepherd. When the ordinary shepherd brings the sheep from the fold, they do not go before him to show them the way. And the sheep scatter. When the wolf comes, the ordinary shepherd runs away. But the good shepherd comes between the wolf and the sheep, would even lay down his life for the sheep, so they can be safe and return home.
I wonder, I wonder if these sheep have a name. There's almost always a sheep named Bob. So we'll say, this is Bob. And sometimes people name a sheep Fluffy. Marigold, Bob, Fluffy, and Marigold, and hmm. wonder how the sheep feel about being in this space. I wonder. where they go when they come out. I wonder if you've ever come close to the good green grass. I wonder where you've touched the cool, refreshing water. I wonder what's helped you find your way through the dangerous places. I wonder what this place could really be. I wonder what this whole place could really be. I wonder if you've ever come close to a place like this. I wonder if you've ever heard the Good Shepherd call you by name. The Good Shepherd. And each of the sheep Marigold and Bob and Fluffy. The cool, refreshing waters are places of danger in the sheepfold, and the good green grass you might want to pause the video and move into your art materials to take some time to enter this story more deeply. I've found some different work for this story. It's one of the freedoms of still being online. And so I'm going to play it a little bit with this cool, refreshing water. 
perhaps in this space and perhaps in other spaces. And you might like to get an empty glass ready as we begin our response time together. If you sit on the bank of a river, you see only a small part of its surface. And yet the water before your eyes is proof of unknowable depths. The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. Or from Isaiah 43, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Take some time to look into your glass. Touch the emptiness inside. There is potential in that emptiness. And see what God might be doing new. To make space, as it were, for that something new. And wherever we are in that emptying or filling, we are sustained by the presence of God visible in those who accompany us, full of possibility and life-giving. So take a moment with your empty, not-so-empty cup and be grateful for those empty places, those clear shelves, those uncluttered rooms, those pauses between breathing in and breathing out, those moments of not knowing, that make room for God. When you're ready, I'll invite you to put some water into that cup. In this glass is a community of molecules. Each drop of water has a history. What stories might it tell of where it has been? A sparkling glint of frost on a blade of grass. A mist hanging over some slough along the road sleeping in the depths of the ocean. Part of a laughing waterfall. Winter's runoff splashing down a mountainside. Falling rain on thirsty gardens. dripping from forest branches. We can only imagine its story, but now it is here with us, offering refreshment and cleansing, making visible the grace of God. So you're invited to take a drink from your glass to taste its coolness on your lips and feel it flow into your throat, absorb it into your body. It connects you to the life from which all life flows, a gift given that is meant to be shared. We also, like the water, have a story and are connected to the stories around us. Each of us has the potential to be a well of wisdom for others, to bring out the best in others, to be like trees planted by streams of living water, greening in the presence of God, bearing fruit in due season.
You're invited to pour some of the water from your glass into a bowl and to invite others in your household or those who might be gathered with you to share some of their water in a bowl that is shared for all. Let it splash and run over. And then share some wisdom or gift that you bring to this community of faith. And watch as that well overflows when it's shared. I'm going to put the story away. You might... Have another drink of water before you put your bowl or your glasses away. Or you might just set them aside as we get ready to share our prayers and have a feast together. So welcome back. I wonder how that was for you or where the cool refreshing waters carried you. I am grateful for whatever time we have together and I invite us to just take a moment in prayer. Sometimes we speak our prayers out loud, sometimes we sing them, sometimes we dance them. Sometimes they are just in such a deep well within us we don't need words and we trust that God hears all our prayers. Hmm. I think I feel like singing this morning. So the one that I'm thinking in my head is, for all your goodness, God, we give you thanks. Thanks for the food that we eat, for the friends that we meet, for each new day we greet, we give you thanks. And this is what it sounds like. I'll sing it through once on my own, and then you're welcome to join in. For all your goodness, God, we give you thanks. Thanks for the food we eat and for the friends we meet. For each new day we greet, we give you thanks. Let's try it together. For all your goodness, God, we give you thanks. Thanks for the food we eat and for the friends we meet. For each new day we greet, we give you thanks. It changed up the ending a little bit, but hopefully you followed along. And you're ready to enjoy some feast. Oh, I'm ready to drink some more water. And have a few grapes. I wonder what you have for feast today. Hmm. Did you remember to wash your hands? That's always something we seem to forget. I sanitized mine as we were doing our response time. So I wonder how your week has been going. And where you've noticed some of that cool, refreshing water. Sometimes our week are so full of things, we hardly have time to notice anything. And other times, the week seems so empty. Or for some people, it feels like every day is too empty. Hmm. So it's good for us to get together, to be with one another, whether that's 
<clears throat> via Zoom or online and Snapchatting or, or to be here together. I think sometimes life is a lot like a parable. We kind of think we know where things are going. We can like to package it all up in a box. But it isn't really until we open it up that we discover and wonder and find some amazing things. I wonder what's helped you open up this week. Are you getting enough rest? Are you spending a good balance of time in the sheepfold and out exploring the world? Have you listened for the Good Shepherd to call you by name? And then followed when you've heard. I think that's the hard part sometimes, right? We, even if discerning what God's calling us to be about isn't tricky enough, then it's finding the will or the courage to do it. We used to think, I almost need somebody that follows me around and picks up all those ideas that I can come up with and does something with them. And the older I get, the more it seems like, no, we need to just pick one or two things and focus on those. Or my energy gets spread too thinly and my cup runs empty. That's part of why I like being in the story circle. So that I can get replenished. Be in a community of faith that encourages and feasts me from time to time. Not just on good food, but on good company. I wonder what's been feeding your soul of late. Well, we have come to the end of our time together. And so wherever this coming week takes you, may you be listening for the call of the Good Shepherd and know yourself loved and called by name. And watch what happens when we change the light. So the light isn't just in this one place in time. But when we change it, it can spread out. And it gets thinner and thinner as it moves out into this room. And it will find its way to wherever you are. And so until we meet again, God bless. Be well. And look after one another. <laughs>